Hey, I'm Tammy and I do math for coffee and today we are doing a beginner geometry proof. You might see one of these in the beginning of the class. So we start with what we're given. Angle 3 and angle 2 are complementary and we know that means that when you add those two together they would equal 90 degrees. They don't have to be right next to each other, we just know that whatever they are they would be 90 if we added them up. We're told that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 also equals 90 degrees. We can see that they're right next to each other and it looks like like that was a right angle but now this is how you know for sure you have to be told and we are asked to prove that angle 3 is congruent to angle 1 so let's work backwards from that so we can kind of plan this proof in order to show that these two are congruent we have to show that angle 3 and angle 1 have the same measure so this has to be the same size as this one and we're gonna have to prove that and what they've told us is that these two add up to 90 degrees and these two add up to 90 degrees. So if we were to subtract just angle 2, then that means 1 and 3 would have to be the same size, right? Because if you add 2 to 3, you get 90. If you add 2 to 1, you get 90. And I know that angle 2 isn't changing, so that's the plan. Set the two sums equal to each other. 1 and 2 equal 90. This is telling us that 2 and 3 equal 90. Subtract 2 out, then we're going to be fine. People understand the math, but where it gets tough is how do you put it into this format with statements and reasons. So follow along, here we go. We're going to start with one of the givens. Angle 3 and angle 2 are, and I'm going to abbreviate because of space, complementary. And the reason I know that's true is because they told me, so you write given. Now think about what I just wrote. What does that mean? That's, you know, it just says complementary, so what can you assume is true from that? That'll be my next line, that the measure of angle 3 all right, let's go back. The measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 90 degrees, and I know that because that is the definition of complementary angles. All right, now what are we going to do next? Well, we've got that set up. We need to state the other combination that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 90 degrees and that's given. Now we have to put these two things equal to each other. If you remember, it's called the transitive property. The transitive property is one that you use in, in proofs a lot, and what it says is that if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Transitive, I always used to remember it, transportation. Things are moving, so A moves to B, B moves to C, so A equals C. If these two things are both equal to 90, then these two things have to be equal to each other. So the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. Do you guys see there's a measure of angle 2 on both sides of this equation? So just like any other algebra equation, you can think of the idea of subtracting those out. Oh, I forgot to put the reason there. The reason I did this was my transitive property of equality. Now we're going to just, in our heads, subtract angle 2 from both sides, and we're at the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 1. The reason we did that is the subtraction property of equality. We have now got the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 1. Once you have two angles that have the same measure, you can say that those two angles are congruent, which is exactly what we were supposed to do. For our last line, we can make the final statement, angle 3 is congruent to angle 1, and the reason is what we just did, which is saying that the measurements are equal, so we're going to go with definition of congruent angles. And you are finished with this proof. Click into this video to watch another one.